Hello, and welcome to the This Happened Today in History podcast. I am your host, Mr. Miller. This podcast will cover a number of topics that happened on this date in history. Please visit the podcast webpage at thishappentoday.buzzsprout.com. There you can download the notes page, which will help you organize the information, as well as develop your own ideas on how these events change the world around us. If you're interested in hearing more, please consider subscribing so you will not miss out on what happens tomorrow in history. Today is June 18th. On June 18th, 1923, 99 years ago today, the first Checker Cab rolled off the line at Checker Cab Manufacturing Company in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Morris Markin, founder of Checker Cab, was born in Smolensky, Russia, and began working when he was 12 years old. At 19, he immigrated to the United States and moved to Chicago, where two uncles lived. After opening his own tailor shop, Markin also began running a fleet of cabs in an auto body shop, the Markin Auto Body Corporation. In 1921, after loaning $15,000 to help a friend's struggling car manufacturing business, the Commonwealth Motor Company, Markin absorbed the Commonwealth into his own enterprise and completely halted the production of regular passenger cars in favor of taxis. The result was a checker cab manufacturing company which took its name from a Chicago cab company that hired Commonwealth to produce its vehicles. By the end of 1922, Checker was producing more than 100 cars per month in Joliet, Illinois, and some 600 of the company's cabs were on the streets of New York City. Markin went looking for a bigger factory and settled on Kalamazoo, where the company took over buildings previously used by the Hanley Knight Company and Dort Body Plant car manufacturers. The first shipment of a Checker from Kalamazoo on June 18, 1923, stood out as a major landmark for the history of the company, which by then employed some 700 people. During the Great Depression, Markin briefly sold Checker, but he bought it back in 1936 and began diversifying his business, making auto parts for other car companies. After converting its factories to produce war material during World War II, Checker entered the passenger car market in the late 1950s, with models dubbed the Supra, Superba, and the Marathon. Superba in the marathon. In its peak production year of 1962, Checker rolled out some 8,173 cars. The great majority of those were taxis. Over the course of the 1970s, however, its economic conditions led taxi companies to convert smaller, more fuel-efficient standard passenger cars into cabs. The 4,000-pound gas-guzzling Checker came to seem more and more outdated. Markin died in 1970. In April 1982, his son David announced that Checker would halt production of its famous cab that summer. Though the company still owns the yellow and Checker cab fleets in Chicago and continued to make parts for the other auto manufacturers, including General Motors, the last Checker cab rolled off the line in Kalamazoo on July 12, 1982. Since then, most taxi cabs have been poorly built, have little legroom, and are very uncomfortable. The Checker cab is fondly remembered for what cabs can be. And in 1948, Columbia Records held a press conference at the famed Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City, which, which, in which label president Goddard Lieberson introduced its new Micro Groove 33 and one third RPM long playing 12 inch vinyl phonograph record disc to the world. Until then, music had been sold on 10 inch 78 RPM shellac discs. The new format was lighter, thinner, and far less apt to break in everyday use and could play up to 20 minutes and later more per side as opposed to the 4 or 5 minute length on a 78. The development was thought to be a boon for classical music as its audio capacity could hold longer compositions, but in time it also gave rise to a collection of songs from popular music acts on an album, a term that originally al- originated with the hard bound packages of 78s and multiple paper sleeves between two covers. The 12-inch disc was to accommodate the growing artistic ambitions of pop and rock artists in the 1960s, fueled a recorded music sales boom throughout the decade into the next. The Budapest-born engineer Peter C. Goldmark of CBS Laboratories is credited with the invention. Interestingly, his son Andy Goldmark became a successful pop songwriter whose compositions were heard on many millions of 12-inch albums. By 1992, sales of compact discs outpaced vinyl albums, and the latter format was thought to be archaic if not dead. For more than a decade now, the 12-inch 33 and a third album has been once again com- become a growth format in the recorded music industry led by the back-to-basics thinking of collectors. Many new releases or reissues are being pressed into heavy-duty 180-gram vinyl with audiophile quality. And finally, in 1983... At 7.33 Eastern Daylight Time, Space Shuttle Challenger lifted off from Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida on Mission STS-7. 
This was Challenger's second flight, and it carried a five-person crew, the largest aboard a single spacecraft up to that time. Commanded by Robert L. Crippen on his second space shuttle flight, STS-7 was to place two communication satellites in orbit and to deploy an experimental pallet with multiple experiments. Aboard was mission specialist Sally Kirsten Ride, PhD, America's first woman to fly in space. She operated the shuttle remote manipulator system, a robotic arm, to deploy and retrieve satellites. Wheel stop 175 13 58 14. Sally Ride was born May 26, 1951 in Encino, California, in the Valley. She was educated at the Los Angeles Public School System and then attended Westlake School for Girls, a private university prep school in Hombly Hills area, Westwood, California, where she graduated in 1968. Miss Ride then studied for three years at Swarthmore College in Pennsylvania, the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, and then entered Stanford University, where she earned bachelor's degrees in both English, a BA, and physics, a BS, in 1973. Continuing postgraduate studies at Stanford, she was awarded a Master of Science degree, MS, in 1975, and then a doctorate in physics in 1978. Dr. Ride was selected as a NASA astronaut candidate in 1978 and underwent a year of training in mission specialist. While awaiting assignment to a space shuttle mission, she served as a CAPCOM capsule communicator for the second and third shuttle missions. Sally Wright flew aboard Shuttle Challenger for mission STS-7 between 18 and 20, the 18th and 24th of June in 1983. With 147 hours of spaceflight, her next flight was the STS-41G, also aboard Challenger, from October 5 through 13, for 197 hours. She was assigned STS-61M, which also was to have flown with the Challenger, but the mission was canceled following the destruction of Challenger in January 28th of 1986. Dr. Ride served aboard the Rogers Commission investigating the tragic loss of the shuttle, along with physicist Richard P. Finum, Ph.D., astronaut Neil Armstrong, and test pilot Chuck Yeager. Sally Ride left NASA in 1987 and worked at the Center for International Arms Control at Stanford University, and in 1989 became a professor of physics at the University of California, San Diego. In 2001, she formed the Sally Ride Science, an advanced educational program at UC San Diego, in 2003, Ride was appointed to the Columbia Accident Investigation Board. Sally Kristen Ride, Ph.D., died July 23, 2012, at the age of 61 years. She was buried at Woodlawn Cemetery in Santa Monica, California. You have been listening to the This Happened Today in History podcast. I thank you for listening, and I hope that you have enjoyed learning about historical events from the past. Thank you to the following websites for their information regarding today's topics thepeoplehistory.com, the first checker cab at beachamjournal.com, the long playing phonograph record LP at bestclassicbands.com, and space shuttle challenger at thisdayinaviation.com. The music used as the background track for this podcast is Americana, created by Kevin McLeod on incompetech.com. If you enjoyed this information and would like to hear more, please consider subscribing as this will keep the historical events in your feed in the morning for each day. I hope you have a great day.